He grows heroin, cocaine, tomatoes that are going to have genomes in them that could at some point lead to tomato children that will eventually affect Boston. Yes, tomato children. That wasn't a scene from an old Hollywood B-movie either. No, that was Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer posing a surreal hypothetical during a case about, appropriately enough, growing marijuana for medical purposes. As every lawyer knows, hypotheticals are the bread and butter of legal discourse. But in his nearly three decades on the court, Breyer has been known for taking the practice to the next level by interjecting wild, sometimes bizarre scenarios into his questions at oral arguments. You cannot hunt green-eyed turkeys. I put purple cellophane on the synthetometer, it signals the presence of a hot dog stand. Imagine you made a hairbrush in the shape of a grape. Let's take a look at some of Breyer's greatest hits. During a 2006 patent case, Breyer, skeptical of a test that courts use to determine whether slight modifications to previous inventions can be patented, invoked a group of ravenous woodland creatures. I have a sensor on my garage door at the lower hinge, and it's when the car is coming in and out, and the raccoons are eating it. So I think of the brainstorm of putting it on the upper hinge, okay? Now, I just think that, that how could I get a patent for that? Breyer likes to bring literary and historical references into his questioning, too. Over the years, he's invoked Abraham Lincoln, the pirate Blackbeard, and even the ancient Egyptian pharaoh, King Tut which he did in this case about whether a company can patent an abstract concept for processing financial transactions. Imagine King Tut sitting in front of the pyramid where all his gold is stored, and he has the habit of giving chits away. <laughs> Good for the gold, which is given at the end of the day, and he hires a man with an abacus, and when the abacus keeping track sees that he's given away more gold than he has in storage, he says, stop, you see? Sometimes Breyer's hypotheticals are a bit harder to connect to a case. This was a case about witness tampering. And during questioning, he brought up a Baltic country's cinematic offerings. Imagine you put your son in his room, and they say, why did you keep your son in his room doing his homework? Because I wanted to prevent him from going to the movies. That's why. Now, when you say that, we would impute, correctly, you wanted to prevent him from going to a Hollywood you wanted to prevent him from going to an old movie, prevent him from going to a new movie, but prevent him from going to a Lithuanian movie? Now, why does that sound so odd? Because there's no realistic possibility that he would go to a Lithuanian movie. Okay? And sometimes, Justice Breyer's hypotheticals are too abstract even for his fellow justices. You've heard of Abbott and Costello and Key and Peele. Well, the comedic duo of Breyer and Scalia, that was a thing, too. It's like a rabbit duck, you know, is it a rabbit or is it a duck? It's a jackal, oh, maybe. I've never heard of a, a rabbit duck. duck. Now, it turns out that the only people who use kerosene, besides railroads, are ice cream wagons. What's an ice cream wagon, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a wagon that uses kerosene to deliver ice cream. <laughs> I didn't understand Justice Breyer's question, where, where he said the the amiable bank robber says, "Would you please step? Say, would you please step over?" Yeah, I'm walking. Hey, bank step robber over there, I'll blow your head off. Is what he says. My example was meant to encompass a polite and armed <laughs> bank robber. <laughs> and that's the fantastical world of Justice Breyer, the king of legal hypotheticals.